Welcome to my Escape for Tarkov Basic Loadouts Guide. This is a beginner's guide to surviving the harsh environments in Tarkov, and this guide is intended for new or intermediate level players that are looking to build strong loadouts while at the same time not breaking their bank. When building efficient kits, the ultimate goal is to set yourself up for future weapons, armor, and medical reinvestment after surviving at least a raid or two. I've made a very similar video in the past called Efficiency Kits, but so many things have changed in Tarkov, ammunition types, new body armors, new pieces of medical equipment, that it's time to do a brand new one for all the new players jumping into the game. The loadouts and ideas discussed in this video are also great for new players because I cover the fundamental basics on how to build a strong Tarkov loadout regardless of price, level, and skill. That being said, if you have higher level dealers available to you, it can reduce the cost of each kit considerably. If you're low level, you can purchase almost anything on the flea market, so you can do this at level 1. Some of the most used items and ammunition in the game are usually listed on the flea market at a reasonable cost to stay competitive with other players on the flea market. Ammunition such as M80, M855A1, BT, or BS won't be that much more expensive from players than the dealers. However, it's important to note that developers have been changing the ammo quantities, price, damage, and pen values so often that everything is subject to change. Because the game changes so often, I highly recommend that you visit the Escape for Tarkov Wiki's ammunition section on a regular basis to stay informed on what ammo you should be using for your weapons. So you're probably wondering what makes good ammunition in Tarkov. Most of the rounds in the game actually have a purpose. Some have high damage, making them great for killing players with like leg shots or if they're not wearing any body armor, do very high damage outputs and others have high pen value, making them good for headshots against players wearing helmets and face shields or bursting through higher class body armor. If you're new to the game, I would suggest trying to use ammunition that has the highest penetration rating that you can afford. The only time that you should ever consider damage over penetration is whenever a round has more than 55 penetration rating. Some examples include SNB or M61 rounds. These rounds sacrifice damage for unnecessary penetration rating as there's currently no class 7 body armor in the game. The cost per round is also a very important factor to consider when choosing ammunition. We'll be using 556 as an example here. The M855A1 round now does 44 damage and 40 pen, which makes it a great well-rounded ammunition type. The M995 round, however, does 41 damage and 53 pen, making it a stronger choice when it comes to PvP. Although the M995 round is better to use, its high cost and demand makes it inefficient for new players or budget builds. If you can use and afford M995, you'll definitely thank yourself later, but anything over 40 pen is typically strong enough to land you some sweet kills on geared players. The lowest pen I would ever consider using on a budget build is 35, but just know that you'll be at a disadvantage at times when fighting enemies with class 5 and 6 body armor. So now that you know a little bit more about ammunition in the game and what you should be looking for, it's time to talk about the weapons. When you're new to the game, you won't have many weapons available at the start, so you most likely have to buy one from the flea market. Don't worry though, a lot of the solid budget weapons are either cheaper than the dealer cost or very close to the price. Everyone in the game has a different opinion on what is the strongest new player or budget weapon. Some players will just tell you to use the Mosin, a 5 shot bolt action rifle which can kill players with 1 or 2 well placed shots. You can find Mosins for cheaper than what Prapor sells them for on the flea market and purchase a PU scope with a mount for under 16,000 rubles. To be completely honest, a PU Mosin is one of the best medium to long range weapons in Tarkov for its price. There's no shame in running this weapon often because of how powerful it is. The LPS rounds are fairly cheap, they do 81 damage and 41 pen, and they're available at level 1 prep war. The only real problem that you'll have with LPS rounds is whenever you're fighting players with class 5 body armor or above, but you can still one tap them or even two hit these players, but it's more reliable if you use another round called 7N1 which gives you 45 pen. If you have the money, it's probably worth buying the 7N1 rounds, but LPS will get the job done the vast majority of the time. 
I don't usually recommend the Mosin to new Escape from Tarkov players because a lot of the fights with scavengers and players will be incredibly close, requiring suppressive fire, multiple shots, and the ability to quickly kill multiple enemies, and a little bit of spray and pray. A Mosin is a very powerful weapon in the hands of a skilled Tarkov player at all distances, including inside of buildings, but you'll find that if you miss your shot, or if the shot doesn't kill the player right away, you'll give the enemies more than enough time to either kill you or outmaneuver you. And for that reason, I highly recommend you choose other weapons available to you, especially if you need to complete quests inside of buildings. If you're farming scavengers at a distance and outside, the Mosin PU is a great choice. So here are my recommendations for new players or for budget builds. Starting with the ADAR. This is a semi-automatic 5.56 weapon that you can pick up on the flea market anywhere from 19,000 rubles up to 27,000 rubles depending on the day in the market price. Many players will consider this one of the best budget weapons in the entire game and I really do agree with them. The round that you want to be running, in my opinion, is M855A1. It has really good damage, really good pen, and it's got a very nice cost, ranging from 200 rubles to 300 rubles depending on market prices, and availability from the dealers. The ADAR is really great because you don't have to do that many modifications to it. You can essentially leave it stock and put a red dot on it, or put a 2x on it for fairly cheap. You can even put the new 2x Monstrum Compact Prism Scope on the weapon if you get a new gas tube for it, both of which are not that expensive on the flea market. In my last budget video, I recommended the Primary Arms Compact Prism Scope, and I still do for most new players. It is a great scope, it's available for reasonably cheap 18,000 rubles, and it's going to give you the range that you need for most maps to truly use the ADAR effectively. Now a lot of people don't like the Prism Scope because of how busy it is, so if you're one of those people, simply running a red dot and possibly finding a better optic in your raid, like an Alcan Scope, which are very common, isn't a bad option. Or for your first two raids, using a red dot, making a little bit of money and reinvesting into a better optic. The great thing about the ADAR as well is you could easily upgrade it to an M4 by buying an M4 lower receiver from Mechanic or one on the flea market for around 19,000 rubles. You can turn this weapon from semi-automatic to full auto, but I would, I would suggest getting recoil reduction attachments for your ADAR before converting it. In fact, I like the ADAR so much because it forces me to place my shots rather than pray and spray, and uh, sometimes I need that extra accuracy for going for headshots, but it's all personal opinion. My next weapon recommendation is an AK-74 or any of the AK-74 variants. You can pick them up for as cheap as 15,000 rubles, and they can range up to 22,000 rubles. This is honestly the biggest shocker when doing some research into the budget builds, especially recently on how cheap you can get these full AK variants. Not the little AKSs, full-blown AKs. People are listing them so often, and sometimes with attachments and rail systems, that I'm kind of shocked that I don't see more people running basic AKs. Now the ammunition that I would recommend is either BT rounds, which are armor-piercing tracer, they go for roughly 330 rubles a piece, or if you have a little bit of extra money to spend or find it in your raids, BS rounds, which are costly and they go for 550 to 600 rubles per round. BTs are a great first start though. They are a little bit of ex a little expensive, but if you use the AK-74 semi-automatic or be cautious with how much ammunition you use, 120 to 180 rounds is all that you should need for your first raid with the weapon. Now, when it comes to first modding recommendations, the PWS CQB muzzle brake is essential. It's going to reduce the vertical and horizontal recoil of your weapon drastically. I would recommend buying that from the flea market. A Tactical Tula rear sight weaver adapter with a red dot is going to help you land those accurate shots. It's much better than the iron sights. And last but not least, the recoil butt rubber pad from Prapor, but people sell them on the flea market. Very cheap and very effective. I was shocked on how effective this weapon truly is. The vertical recoil isn't bad and full auto is very easy to control, especially in a crouched stance. I don't have high skills when it comes to recoil control or assault rifle skill. They're very close to basically level one. So this is the standard performance that you can expect out of this weapon setup and truly the biggest surprise of all of the weapons that I've chose today. 
Now to experienced players, the next weapon suggestion is not going to be a shock. The Vepper Hunter. This is a semi-automatic assault carbine that shoots 308. It has 5 and 10 round magazines, but you're going to want to use the 10 round magazines. You can pick one of these up on the flea market for as low as 28,000 rubles. Sometimes they can be even cheaper depending on the day, and I've seen them on average for 32,000 rubles. A little bit more expensive to the other weapon options, but that's because of the M80 round. It's an absolute monster, and it's really cheap. 308 is one of the strongest ammunition types in the game. The standard M80 round does 80 damage and 45 pen, allowing it to go through class 5 body armor very easily. Now when it comes to cheaper modifications for the Vepper Hunter, you're going to be in luck because there really isn't a whole lot of options. You don't have a muzzle brake, you don't have any handguards, you really can just put an optic on it and upgrade the magazine capacity. I usually like a red dot on the receiver, similar to the AK setup, but you can put a mount and put pretty much any optic that you want on the Vepper Hunter. Just keep in mind though that with the mounts, it's going to take up a lot of space on your screen. I'm not a big fan of a PSO, but you can install a PSO or OKP7 OK optic. But my personal recommendation is use a red dot PKO6 on the receiver as you see on this screen. And don't forget the 10 round magazines. Now you won't have 10 round magazines available from your dealers, but you can buy them from other players for about 6,000 rubles a magazine. It's definitely worth it. And I recommend that you do that. Five rounds usually isn't enough, especially if you're gonna be panicking, if you're being attacked by a player or multiple scavs. Get those 10 round magazines, you won't regret it. Now there are plenty of other decent budget weapons, but not nearly as good as the ones I've suggested. A lot of people are gonna be wondering, what about the Vepper 136, the SKS, the OPSKS? Well, all those weapons really require you to use the BP round, which is a fairly expensive round and slightly unaccessible to new players. You can certainly buy them from the flea market at a premium, but you're gonna be paying a lot more for rounds that are just as effective or less effective as some of the ones I've already mentioned in this video. That being said, the guns are cheap. The SKS is available at level one prep war. Same with PS rounds. It's not a horrible choice. You can find them as cheap regular SKSs at 14,000 rubles on the flea market sometimes where OP SKSs go for just under 30,000 rubles, not including any sort of PSO. One of my favorite weapon recommendations in the past has been the Vepper 136, which is essentially a semi-automatic AKM, but I feel the ADAR does a much better job than the Vepper 136 now, so if you're interested in that type of semi-automatic rifle play, I highly suggest the ADAR over the Vepper 136, but if you want to do something a little bit different and pick up a Vepper for fairly cheap because they can go as low as 17,000 rubles, it's not a horrible option. Just make sure that you buy a better compensator, get the butt rubber for the butt stock and use BP ammunition because the PS rounds only have 34 pen and you might run into some problems being unable to kill players with even class 4 body armor. Now that you have a weapon and ammunition, it's time to protect yourself. There are a large variety of armor and helmets in Escape from Tarkov. We're going to be focusing on the ones that give you the best possible bang for your buck. These are typically armored chess rigs that provide both carry capacity for medication, grenades, and magazines, and armor value. Now, in older patches, and in my last video, I recommended that people check out the 6B5-16 body armor, which is a class 3 body armor with 70 durability. This is great at surviving scavenger attacks, getting shot with shotguns a lot, pistol calibers, and low tier rifle rounds. However, it will not stack up against most players because it's not class 4. So, I no longer recommend this type of body armor because it's fairly pricey in comparison to other choices, and it's not going to be absorbing shots from players as well as some other body armors. This is still a, a really nice body armor um, if you want to use it, especially when it comes to killing scavs, it's okay, but there's better options out there. Better options such as the brand new 6B3TM. This is one of my favorite body armors in the entire game now. It is a class 4 body armor. You can pick it up for 42,000 rubles as low. I've seen it full durability on the flea market because scavengers have it. Or if you want to buy it directly from Ragman for 47,000 rubles. It is cheaper than the 6B516 and it is a class 4 body armor. 
Now another body armor that I recommend that is, it used to be in the game, but it's a lot more accessible is the 6B515 camo version, which is a uh, class four body armor with 40 durability points. Now the one you see on your screen has 34.4 because I picked it up on the flea market for 19,000 rubles and repaired it for 12,000 rubles. So yeah, that means I picked this body armor up for as cheap as 31,000 rubles, and it's a class four body armor. This one is probably gonna be your best value if you search on the flea market for it, but the 6B3TM or the 6B515 are both amazing options, and honestly, I like them both. So either way, you're gonna be pretty secure with that class four body armor, and you're gonna be taking shots from scavengers and players. Now we covered the body armor and the tactical rig, it's time to take a look at the helmets. Now there are two helmets that stand out when it comes to budget. The first is available right away to all players at Ragman level one, and is considered by many Tarkov players, including myself, as one of the best budget value items in the entire game. And that is the SSH-68 helmet. It is a class three helmet, which is gonna stop most pistol rounds and low tier rifle rounds, but has a high ricochet chance meaning that even rounds that are capable of going through the helmet still have a significant chance of ricocheting off keeping you alive. I've had Mosin 7N1 rounds ricochet off this helmet, saving my life. 17,000 rubles for this thing it is a no-brainer. Now down the road, if you unlock the quest chemical part 4 with skier and turn it into skier, you can get a really good budget helmet called the ZSH-12M helmet. You can buy it from Skier for 39,000 rubles. The black version is the cheapest on the market. I've checked from Skier directly, so you're probably not gonna be able to find this from other players. So doing the quest is, is, is basically essential. It's a class four helmet that can also be fitted with a class three face shield. Really decent value, something to consider down the road, but the SSH-68 helmet is certainly your best choice, especially for new players or for the ultimate budget build. Now let's move on to the last major topic of the video, which is medication. There are a large variety of medications available to players in Tarkov, some more expensive than others. We're gonna be covering the basics of keeping you alive in the fight and keeping things reasonably priced. With the addition of splints and combat medical kits, things can get really pricey and you can burn through medication fast if you're not paying a lot of attention. So that being said, there's lots of great medical combinations out there. We are gonna be focusing on effective medical combinations that are relatively cheap for new players. The first being painkillers. You can buy these from therapists for roughly 4,000 rubles. These are gonna give you roughly 10 minutes of mobility, even with broken or blackened legs. It's important to note that these do not repair the damage, but allow you to head to the extraction or move into cover while sustaining these injuries. They are an essential piece of Tarkov survival and you should never, ever enter a raid without them. I always bring at least two packs of some sort of painkiller, one for combat and one backup in my secured container. Next, you're gonna need something to stop the bleeding. For that, I typically use two car medical kits. Two car medical kits give you 440 healing points and cost 12,000 rubles for both. For comparison, Selua medical kits cost nearly 15,000 for one kit with 400 healing points. An IFAC runs for 21,000 rubles and gives you 300 healing points. The catch is two car medical kits take up four slots, where one IFAC takes up one slot. You can opt in to purchase a Sulua for 14,000 rubles if you're scared of taking too much space, but I still prefer the car medical kits. Another thing I do is bring at least one AI2 medical kit with me to help heal legs or body parts that are not affected by a bleed. The reason why I do this is to ensure I have enough healing points on my medical kits to heal bleeds and not waste them on extra damage from rounds, damage from falls, or damage that isn't critical and doesn't really need to be used by my car med. Another good thing about the AI2 is it has a two second application time, which is faster than all the other medical kits in the game. So if you are in the middle of a firefight, an AI2 can make the difference between life and death if you use it at the right time. Taking in an AI2 though is optional because it's not great value anymore. Two car medical kits should be good enough to get you through most raids 
and if you're unsure, maybe bring a third. A newer piece of equipment that was recently added to the game that you should consider bringing in is an immobilizing splint. This is a 5 use splint that costs 8,000 rubles and it can help you prevent early departures from your raids. If you don't have these unlocked from the dealers, you can pick them up on the flea market anywhere between 7,000 rubles and 11,000 rubles. Bringing a splint is totally optional because you have your painkillers and if there's any severe damage to your legs, it should give you enough time to leave the raid, but I recommend bringing one just in case. And if you do decide to purchase one, make sure you keep it in your secured container because it is five uses and if you die, you can use it in multiple raids. Now a combat surgery kit is a great piece of medical equipment, but it is a bit on the pricey side and can take up too much space, especially if you only have an alpha container. For basic loadouts and budget runs, you do not need to bring one, especially if you have painkillers and splints. Now the last thing that you need is a bag to grab supplies. Most of the time, you can grab a bag from killing scavengers or other players. But if you need to buy a bag, you can find an MBSS bag as low as 9,000 rubles on the flea market, or you can find scab backpacks for around 15,000 rubles. I consider this an optional step when it comes to running a budget build because it's not hard to find a bag in the raids you play after you kill a few scavengers. Now let's talk about the most important thing when it comes to building a basic loadout or a budget loadout, and that is the total cost of the kit. So when we talked about weapons, the average weapon was going for around 20,000 rubles on the flea market. The modifications that are required to reduce the recoil and help you aim better were on average 30,000 rubles. The ammunition and the magazines will depend on the weapon that you choose, but let's assume the more expensive ammunition choices at 120 to 180 rounds at 30,000 rubles. Your armor is going to cost you around 45,000 rubles. Your helmet is going to cost you 17,000 rubles and your medications on the lower end are going to cost you at least 16,000 rubles. That leaves you with a kit costing 158,000 rubles on average. If you decide to bring a backpack, extra painkillers, and a splint, that brings the price up to 179,000 rubles. You have everything you need to kill geared players, survive from scavs, absorb shots, and retreat effectively from your raids using medication if you're too hurt. There is one thing I didn't mention, insurance. You should always insure your gear if possible. The cost to insure this kit is roughly five to 6,000 rubles, and there's actually a good possibility you'll get some of your items back, including your armor, and here's why. The helmet that you're using has one of the worst sale values in the game, meaning it's not really worth it that players take it because there's most likely better gear either on you or in the raid that they should grab. The only way someone's gonna take your helmet is if they don't already have one. Your body armor is a tactical armored rig, meaning that players need to drop their own body armor and tactical rig just to wear yours or put it into their backpack and that has bad sale value itself. They're usually destroyed after a fight, so people typically leave them behind. It is the most common item I get back from insurance returns. Now, unfortunately, your weapons will most likely get taken because of the optics that you have or attachments on the guns, and they're easier to carry and store. They have much better sale value than your armor or helmet. And you're not going to be getting your ammo back or medication because they're uninsurable, but you might get some magazines back, but those are basically cheap and worthless, at least the 30 round magazines for most of the guns. But if you randomly get killed by scavs, or if you're playing with friends and they drop your loot, you can get a lot of your gear back at a really good price. So with that being said, unless you're doing lots of labs, you should probably consider ensuring your gear every single raid, regardless on if you're doing a budget raid or if you're going in with all your expensive gear. If you survive your raid, you should always prioritize buying a suppressor for your weapon if you can. In my opinion, it is the most important attachment you can buy as a solo player to help you survive your raid. It will help prevent players from knowing your exact location and charging you down from across the map. It can help you engage players at longer distances, keeping them guessing or possibly opening up an easy headshot and it can help you stay hidden whenever needed if you're really hurt. After that, I would focus on reducing your recoil as much as possible or buying better helmets and uh, armor to help you survive your raids. Typically use a basic loadout or a budget loadout, keep adding to it every single time you survive until you die and then rinse and repeat. 
So that concludes my basic loadouts, ultimate guide to escape from Tarkov, building efficient budget kits, and helping you survive your raids from scavenger attacks and other players. There's lots to escape from Tarkov, especially when it comes to player positioning, surviving your maps, getting to your extraction, and completing your quests. But if you're prepared for engaging other players, scavengers, and general survival, you will do better, make more money, and survive more raids. Your loadout is one of the most important ways of surviving your raids. And you will only do that if you start investing a little bit more into your survival. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing for more Escape from Tarkov guides and content or watching the live streams Monday through Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you know somebody who's brand new to Tarkov, share this video with them because I know it's going to help them.